Alrighty, y'all. Are you gone? We're looking at Reddit slash Ask an Australian. See what we can find when you ask the Aussies. Please say Australian things to me first up. I'm an Aussie living in Toronto and it's starting to do my head in. I'm feeling homesick and videos of magpies no longer cut it. I just want to be called again. Please say Aussie things to me for the serotonin. <laughs> okay, let's see what this can spawn up. Train canceled, bus replacement available? <laughs> Oh, sounds funny enough. I don't quite get it, but uh, I know a lot of you probably do. As an American living in Australia, I wish they had said replacement bus because it said coach online and it took me two hours to figure out what that meant. <laughs> I mean, did they not know what coach meant though? I mean, the word coach and bus are, is used pretty uh, pretty interchangeably in my experience. Like very, uh, the word coach is used more, I would argue here. Nice indicator, Cad. As someone who has watched my fair share of Aussie dash cams, even I can admit that's accurate. I love how Australians short most words, but not indicator. That gets the full pronunciation. <laughs> and then someone replies, Blinka. <laughs> they must have gotten their license from a wheat mix packet. <laughs> Clown. Fuck, it's hot. <laughs> it's 38 degrees today in the shade. I can't. We're doing a Macca's run. You in? And you swing past a servo and grab us a pack of durries, a chico roll, and an ice break. As well as going past a bottle shop and grabbing a slab of piss and some UDLs for the Sheila's. Anya, mate. Keep in mind, I'm reading these in my normal accent. Uh, I'm not trying an Aussie accent because I know better than that. But uh, yeah, that is super Aussie. I freaking love it. It's even fun to read. It's like, it's actually fun to read. I freaking love the slang, man. <laughs> you need to harden the fuck up, mate. These are so good. Have a cup of concrete, mate. <laughs> Two cups if you're real sookie. What is sookie? Oh, my God. Do people in Australia really carry portable sirens in their car? I'm a longtime Reddit lurker, and I made an account just to ask this question. My new roommate is from Australia, and he said that people carry portable sirens in their cars because Australia is so desolate and has ambulance shortages. When people need to urgently get themselves or a loved one to the hospital for medical care, they could place a siren on their car to cut through traffic. He said you are allowed to break traffic laws with the siren on and other cars must yield to you. He said there are massive fines in place around 10K if you misuse your siren. However, upon Googling this stuff, I am, um, I am unable to find any information about it. Is my roommate just trolling me? That makes me curious. I mean, I can see like technically how that could be a thing, right? I mean, it'd be nice to be able to do that in an emergency dire situation. I can also see it being abused quite a bit. So uh, I have a hard time believing they would just let you put like lights and sirens on if you're not an actual, you know, ambulance or not an actual police car. So you're going to have to fill me in on that. That sounds like it might be a troll. Uh, let's see what the comments say. I remember one time I broke my arm, but my siren wasn't working. So I had to lean out the window and yell, wee woo, wee woo, all the way to the hospital. It was a five hour drive and a bloody broken arm. And that's a bastard to do. <laughs> Oh, gee. Please post everything your roommate tells you on here. That would be helpful for all of us to gauge how truthful they are being. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say that's actually a good idea. Oh, my God. In Canberra, if you put a ladder on the roof, that makes you a trainee that the road rules don't apply. <laughs> I have to say, I have to say, just being for fun here, but I don't know, kind of truthful. Yeah, I usually it's here. Uh, I guess trucks are, are too generic because trucks can be used for work and, of course, not used for work here in America. I'm sure you guys know that. And I'm just talking about semi-trucks. Let me specify. I mean pickup trucks, you know, like a Dodge Ram or a Ford F-250. You know, trucks are hit or miss. Some are nice. Some are mean. But it's the cargo van. So when someone's driving in one of, like, the American cargo vans or even a Euro van, which we have many of those over here as well, uh, and it has, you know, some fancy vinyl wrap on it and a company's name plastered all over it, you would be surprised that in my experience, they usually drive like total assholes, like speeding away at every light and uh, cutting people off, not using signals. Now, I understand if they got a business to run, maybe they're behind. They got a busy day. OK, maybe I, I get that they're in a hurry. But geez, man, some of the craziest people I've seen <laughs> like cut me off are some work van. That's for a company. So it kind of falls into that tradey spot. Not exactly, but you get what I'm saying. Dad misused his once, and I think the fine was around 9600 ish dollars. Holy smokes. Still cheaper than a pack of smokes, he said. <laughs> 
Your roommate sounds like a top bloke. It's refreshing to hear an Aussie educating his mates overseas on these really practical things. When you visit, you can pick up a temp siren at the airport. You'll just need to show them your visa. Or if you're hiring a car, I'd recommend asking for one. <laughs> yeah, starting to sound like some heavy trolling now. I, I, I think we can gather that. Ooh, here might be a good one. I got to see the answers for this. What is the most backward thing about Australia? Internet speeds. <laughs> yeah, that one's got to be up there. I just, I hear that so much. And I hear it, it isn't as bad as people think. And I also hear it is totally bad. I get all sides of the coin there. And I was looking for this comment, the irony, right? The worst thing about it, this is an Australian company, CSIRO, invented Wi-Fi. And we're still shit. <laughs> yeah, I do find that pretty funny. Gambling is everywhere. This is something I was shocked by just because it's not something that comes up a lot in videos and... Uh, of course, I wouldn't know like on the ground lifestyles and cultures and different things available uh, by, of course, you know, not being able to walk around Australia or visit Australia in person yet. But yeah, I have s seen and heard enough over the last uh, year and a half or two uh, from people, some anecdotes about gambling is just off the charts. Uh, something I, I think I've heard that gambling is bigger I guess, per capita in Australia than anywhere else on earth, like way more than even here in the America, where I think people like to gamble here to an extent. I mean, there's little slot places people go to all the time. And then, of course, certain states have casinos, which are generally pretty popular. And then certain states also, like ones I've lived in, have sports betting where you can bet right from your phone while you're watching sports. Uh, but I guess it's like not even as much as they gamble in Australia. At least that's what I've heard. Uh, of course, this post says so as well. Someone adds the pokies were bad enough. The damage was immense, but only a tiny fraction of what people that use them. Now the gambling apps are everywhere. Virtually everyone under 30 I work with has multiple accounts on their phone and can't watch a single sporting event without feeling the need to be part of the action. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, for example, I, I guess, see, I think on the surface, maybe and maybe I'm lucky here with my outlook, I think gambling is fun for like a second. Like it's like, oh, uh, I want to bet and see who wins this game. And, you know, maybe I'll win, right? I, I think it is kind of fun, like innocently. Uh, and then the thing is when they pass sports betting in Illinois, uh, you know, so that's a thing here. You can do it right from your phone, like this person said. And I was kind of excited about like, oh, something new. Uh, let's try it out. And this was, oh, God, a couple, maybe three years ago. I can't remember. And fun fact is I threw like 200 bucks in there, which I was like reluctant to do because I'm, I'm not really the gambling type. I hate burning money like that. And I threw 200 bucks in there, and I think I played along with like a couple baseball games in this uh, in the gambling app. And... I think all this time later, I haven't touched. I think I still have like 150 bucks in there. Like I only spent like 50. And of course, I didn't really win anything. And then I just fell out of it. So I, I really don't do it as well as I only go to a casino maybe like once a year, if that. And I spend very, very little. So I, I have fun, but I think it's because I don't spend a lot and I don't make it a habit. So that's my experience with it. But yeah, that is something I was very shocked to hear. And uh, it's one of those things that's touchy, right? It can be fun in moderation, uh, or it can unfortunately be damaging and controls some people's lifestyle. And that, that's a scary thing. Okay, here's an interesting one. Lack of coffee options past 3 p.m. I like going out for a late afternoon coffee. Yeah, that one would bother me. And I guess I've been lucky there because everywhere I've lived has late coffee options, even into the night, like 10, 11 p.m. And uh, I like that. So I would hate not having that. Not being able to take your dog on the bus. In other places, back home, I could take my dog anywhere on the bus for the price of a child's fare. Makes things very limited when you don't drive. Yeah, that could be annoying. I really need a dog. I want a dog. I, I don't have any experience with that, but uh, I suppose that would definitely suck. Lack of insulation, double glazing, and anything that keeps the heat in winter but blocks the heat in summer. Every rental we have had here has been freezing in winter in a greenhouse in summer. Really? I mean, that might be personal experience. That I, It's hard to generalize every home or apartment in a huge country like Australia. Uh, but yeah, that is... That's too bad. This has been really fun. I'm going to end it on this one. I could do these all night, so I got to cut it here. Uh, what's something people may find surprising when they come to Australia? I'll go first. Posted speed limits are not a guide. They are, in fact, the limit. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I heard it could be pretty strict um, uh, with speeding, which, I mean, obviously 
from a technical standpoint, it should be, right? Speed limits are there for safety, and uh, so everyone can go in an orderly fashion and not uh, get into crazy high-speed wrecks in tight areas. But I heard they're just very, very strict, uh, whereas someone, at least from my perspective, from the U.S., depending on what state they're from, uh, a lot of you know times you can get away with you know a little bit of speeding, right? Generally, traffic flow on the highways goes 5 to 10 miles per hour above the speed limit, and no one gets in trouble. You'd have to be really trying to get a traffic ticket in certain areas, like going 20 over or something. Obviously, when you're in towns and smaller roads, it's much more strictly enforced. I've had people ask about doing a day trip to the Outback. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, it's more than a day from Brizzy. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine, um, you know, you leave in Brisbane. Oh, I'm going to go to the Outback today, you know. Then we'll hit the hotel tonight. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's just not happening. It's going to take you a day, day and a half just to get into the Outback where you feel like you're in proper, you know, Outback, isolated yeah, that's not going to happen. I was doing field work catching lizards near Mount Isa and had a wicked camper with two Dutch tourists stop and ask me about 3 p.m. in the afternoon <laughs> if they would make it to Broome, oh my God, uh, by dark. When I left and told them they were still in Queensland, they responded with a shock, that cannot be, we've been driving all day. <laughs> that sucks because Broome is way over in Western Australia, correct? There's no way they'd get over there. They'd have to cross Northern Territory and cross most of Western Australia. That's just, oh, jeez. I met a Swiss guy that lamented his best friend moved 15 minutes car ride away from him and he never gets to see him anymore. Oh my God, really? I was perplexed, so I asked him why. It was because he lived too far away now. That is mind-blowing that someone would think 15 minutes is far. This is where Australians and Americans can connect is because uh, our countries are absolutely huge. And uh, 15 minutes is absolutely nothing. Like, every time I've ever been in a car, it's more than 15 minutes usually. I mean, that is seriously nothing. I think uh, it's nothing if something is an hour, hour and a half away. That is nothing. That's normal. I don't even think about it. For some, For something to make me scratch my head and think, do I want to do this today? It would have to be like a three-hour drive or a four-hour drive. Very doable, I mean, and very common here. But, you know, something that's a little more frowned upon like every day. Like you wouldn't want to do that all the time. But 15 minutes, holy smokes, I can't imagine that being far. <laughs> my colleagues who are mostly European or from Latin America are surprised how many Asian people are in Sydney. I think they thought we'd all be blonde surfers. Yeah, stereotypes are always goofy, right? I think maybe people who don't look into and study Australia or haven't been there, uh, yeah, they might they might picture, you know, the beach and the surfers. And you're just going to get that image. Uh, meanwhile, Australia as a whole, and probably especially Sydney being a really big city, I mean, it's going to be an international place. There's going to be people from everywhere in all corners of the city. So, yeah, I, that wouldn't surprise me just because I, I've, you know, seen enough and heard enough uh, from Australian people on this channel that uh, it's very diverse and I think that's really cool. The UV, ooh, worked with folks who came over from hot desert regions elsewhere, puzzled why they felt like they were frying in heat they were used to. Yeah, that's something I would just have to feel someday and I know it's going to be strong, but I want to feel how strong because I, in my opinion, you know, uh, the, the sun is different depending on where you go. But I tell you what, the sun in Texas, the sun in New Mexico, the sun in Arizona is like unbelievably strong compared to most other states I've ever been to here in the U.S. And uh, I can't really picture it being stronger than down there. It is just something about that desert heat just burns your skin and, and burns everything in its path. So the fact that I felt that compared to anywhere up north is way different and thinking that the UV on Australia is still stronger than that on another level, that just really puts it in perspective like, damn, you got to take that seriously. <laughs> you got to get shade when you can. You have, have, half to wear sunblock uh, all the time because that must be a strong sun. If it's stronger than what I felt here, geez, I can't even imagine. 15% greater UV than the Northern Hemisphere, apparently. See, that is crazy. Oh, my God. Due to the Earth's tilt orientation, Australia is closest to the sun in summer, whereas the northern bit of the world is closest in their winter. The sheer size of the great, big, mostly empty middle of it. Yeah, that is what's, I, I think, freaky. I think that is super freaky that it's just so empty in the majority of the middle of the whole continent. It's just wild. 
really sinks in when you're flying from Sydney to Southeast Asia. Zone out for several hours. Look out the window and, yep, still over Australia. <laughs> Woo. How fast you'll burn outside? Yep. To add to the UV one, uh, the, the sunburn is wicked in Australia. It, it's got to be. There's snow and it gets cold. Yeah, that's something I fell victim to. The Again, stereotypes are always goofy. Uh, the perception, if we're using just media, which is horrible, I know because media is terrible about how America is. It's totally inaccurate. So naturally, uh, the media perception of most places is really wrong. And uh, Australia is painted as just all hot, all desert, all outback. It's either desert or beaches, and it's really, really hot. You wouldn't, I didn't even know anywhere in Australia got snow. And once I learned that there are mountain ranges and inland areas that do get snow, even snow touching some big cities, super rare, but in freak events, blew my mind. And to learn that a lot of Australia does get pretty cold, not super, super cold like the northern U.S. and Canada, but they get pretty cold. So learning about Australia over the you know last couple of years has been really fascinating for me. And finally, last one, I had U.S. visitors over once for business and they stayed on, etc. But they were amazed at the high quality of food and that the cost was higher than they were used to. So yeah, on the one side, you have the cost would be most likely more in most cases. That's what I've heard. Whether it's uh, for most groceries, especially eating out can be way more expensive. Although I don't know if it's way more expensive. It depends. Because in the U.S., of course, they, we have the goofy tipping culture. So, you know, your bill might be, it's getting higher lately. I feel like everything's more expensive lately. And then, of course, you, you have to tip, right? So it can be pretty pricey here in the U.S. as well. Uh, now, the quality of food, that is something I would like to discover. I mean, I know it, it's not really a good measure, but the mail, mail time, you know, we've gotten a lot of different foods. Uh, and granted, it's mostly packaged stuff, of course, uh, obviously, uh, but it's really, really good. And a lot of even like uh, it sounds weird, but <laughs> a lot of the, you know, the sweets, the lollies, the candies um, are a lot more like natural, cleaner ingredients. So that's pretty cool. And I think that would kind of preview that, uh, you know, regular real food uh, might be of higher quality on average. Of course, there's really high quality food in America as well, but it's usually really expensive. Anywho, that's going to do it for this one. This was uh, pretty interesting. It's been a while since we dove into Australian Reddit, and this one was, of course, a little different twist with Ask an Australian. Well, of course, we can do more like this coming up very soon. Let me know what you thought and your comments or your experiences down below. Please throw a like on there if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to be part of this amazing community. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Until next time, y'all. Catch you later.